Gisli Paulson, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the kind of complexities that arise when we try and move beyond our particular data sets into uh, these kind of multidisciplinary, uh, multi-proxy uh, projects. And I'm basing my experience from, from this particular project, DataArc, which aims to do just that in the North Atlantic, where really the, the, the data sources are um, only partly archaeological. We're dealing with historical sources, we're dealing with literary sources, we're dealing with paleoecological sources, a lot of different things. And uh, what we've chosen to do as a, as a kind of exploration and con connectivity layer for all these different data sources is to take SIDOC, uh, the, the SIDOC CRM uh, concept model, but uh, we've chosen to kind of use it a little bit creatively uh, as, a, as a map, as a kind of concept map to get us from these uh, general concepts about the past onto the very data themselves. And so uh, I'll talk a little bit about SIDOC. I'm not going to talk about data arc but our dear leader, Colleen, is sitting in the back of the room who will give a, hopefully, a comprehensive talk about it on Saturday. So please see her talk for, for more information about DataArc. Um, I want to say that uh, the reason why we chose SIDOC is it's been a central standard for data integration uh, in kind of broad applications through archaeological, cultural heritage, uh, historical communities. There are a bunch of extensions dealing sp with specific kind of uh, domain-specific issues when it comes to integration, and uh, it has a very active community support group. So uh, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of slides about how how SIDOC works. But if you're interested, please look it up. Um, it's a uh, it's impossible to cover in 15 minutes. But uh, simply put, it's a tool set for clarifying and describing the character of elements in the data structure and the relationships between these elements. And we talk about classes, or E, for uh, kind of properties to do with the elements themselves, so tables, that kind of thing. And then uh, P for properties uh, when talking about the relationships between these data elements. And so um, when you try and do this, you realize uh, that this is quite complicated. Just saying that a site has a place, or a person has a place, or an object has a place, will run you through lots of classes, lots of properties. You really have to kind of, when you think about just every single kind of aspect to, to emplacement, it becomes quite complicated. So SIDOC in, uh, intends or sort of attempts to really capture that complexity and all the kind of different variabilities that may uh, be expressed either sort of implicitly or explicitly in data structures. Same with time. We've got a couple of different ways to uh, articulate time, durations, events, sequence, um, that kind of thing. Uh, just touching on a couple of the extensions, when you, when you look at the, the kind of core um, tools and you start trying to use them, you realize immediately that there are some shortcomings uh, in, the, in the original plan, but, but all these extensions allow you to take it a little bit further. So if you're interested in kind of really getting specific about certain events, uh, you can look at CRM Geo. Um, if you're more, if you're if you're interested in kind of talking about not necessarily just what happened, but the sources detailing what happened, you can also look at the kind of declarative uh, extensions in CRM Geo and so on. Uh, again, let's let's not spend too much time on on Psyduck, uh, except to say that it is uh, you know quite a powerful toolkit to to do the kind of integration work necessary when it comes to um, multi-proxy projects. So the, the data set I'm involved with uh, in, in DataArc is, is called um, eSlave. It's a site database for Iceland. Uh, there are about 100,000 sites in it, concentrated in certain areas. Only about a third of them have a place, have a kind of geolocation, but the, the other two thirds have been kind of derived from historical sources and so on. So it's a sort of an inter interesting mix between archaeological and kind of historical places. Uh, it has certain problems. Uh, the, the main issue I have with it is that it sort of focuses quite heavily on the site as the primary unit. Uh, the, the schema itself does not necessarily allow for a lot of historical contextualization. Um, and the, uh, for that reason, a lot of things we know about the way sites interacted between each other, the connections between places simply does not fit in the data layer. So uh, I addressed this issue a few years ago, um, and that's my, my PhD project, which essentially takes 
uh, the kind of core settlement structure of Iceland, uh, East Levin a little bit beyond that, and uh, kind of explores the, the way places are connected and the way these kind of collectivities kind of uh, build up. So I went to historical land census documents. Uh, reading through them, you can see quite a lot of the information has to do with rights onto other places or owners who live somewhere else. So kind of taking that into a model, you can say that every place has kind of subsidiary units, both where people live and uh, environmental resources. You can scale that up and say that all these places are connected in some way uh, through reading historical documents. And so what you end up with is kind of a series of layers of connectivities, uh, networks of ownership, resource access, um, social obligations, uh, transfer of goods, all this, all these kinds of things, which uh, I, w- I want to stress don't necessarily only kind of show uh, connections as incidental to the, to the way sites um, operated, but in my opinion is, is kind of core to the ontology in, in which the, the sites kind of behaved in the past. So for that reason, the, the database layer that I've constructed on top of the kind of national survey database is really a database of connectivity. And uh, the, the research, uh, the ongoing research uh, used in that database is to do with kind of understanding how these interactions lead to emergent properties and to social complexity. So the question is, how well does CIDAC handle a database with this kind of goal in mind, uh, social complexity, uh, connections between places, and so on? And so just to, to show you the, the kind of work I've been doing in order to map my stuff to, to uh, other data, databases through, through Datarc, uh, is, is, uh, uh, the, the example I want to take is, is Driftwood. Driftwood is quite an interesting resource for Iceland. Generally speaking, it's coming from Siberia, um, northern Norway, places like that, washing onto the shores of northern Iceland. And because Iceland isn't forested to any big degree, I mean, we have dwarf perches and that kind of thing, it's actually a crucial resource for construction across the country. So the, uh, the management claim and transport of driftwood from northern shores to the south play a vital part in, in Icelandic history. Just to give you a sense of, of what these places look like, I wouldn't expect uh, this to be what that uh, shore looked like in medieval times, but it's probably, probably an aggregation of about a century. But uh, these beaches were full of driftwood. It was reliable. It came uh, very reliably and, like I said, played a, a, a key part in, in construction across the country. But what I want to stress is that we can't really look at kind of driftwood claims and driftwood transport as it's just a question of kind of material transference, because first and foremost, it's a, it's a map of power. Uh, certain farms in the south, very rich, very powerful farms, almost always church farms, have claims on these tiny, very minor um, places up here. Uh, not only do they have uh, claims on the driftwood there, but the fact that they have these claims essentially means that these have to be inhabited because uh, they are... Um, if you want driftwood, you, you sort of have to, have to stay there by the shore and collect it. Uh, this is the exception. Generally speaking, driftwood comes here and then just kind of leaves. So uh, these places have to be inhabited by, by tenant farmers in order to ensure that the driftwood is collected, uh, aggregated, and brought south. So it's, it's kind of a map of, of power structures, map of inequality, uh, also a, a map of uh, production chains because we can also assume that the, this driftwood was, was actually worked in the north and brought south. So in other words, it's not really enough to talk about uh, claims between X and Y, uh, which would be easy in SIDOC, but not so much if we have to take it uh, into all these kind of dimensions of power, dimensions of, um, of uh, inequality and so on. So what we found when we uh, started uh, doing SIDOC mappings of this was um, we, kind of, we had to expand a little bit uh, on, on, the, on the way in which SIDOC should be used. And primarily what we had to do was to kind of apply multiple classes onto uh, this object because um, just for, for my purposes, you can think of driftwood as being like one of several classes in the, in the, the, the ontology. If you think about what other people in the project are doing, 
a uh, paleocologist might be interested in uh, the the provenance or the kind of uh, the age of, of the wood. Um, someone looking at climate change might be interested in the, the way kind of driftwood and sea ice have a dynamic. And they would be interested in other kind of property classes and other relations uh, suiting their purposes. Uh, so when you try to use a, uh, an ontology like SciDoc, it's almost impossible to keep it sort of neat and tidy. Instead, what, what happens is that you basically, you kind of, you, you make this assemblage of concepts. Uh, the driftwood keeps appearing again and again and again in slightly different forms. And uh, in a way, kind of to use assemblage theory, we can talk about sort of relations of interiority where driftwood keeps appearing but keeps sort of having relations within each other and then all these connections to other parts of the data structures. And uh, that is uh, a major kind of element of, of complexity when it comes to using SciDoc. But uh, what, what I want to end on, on talking about is um, this, because of the way in which you have to really work through every single, uh, every single element to which kind of your data relates to a, an object like Driftwood, we've had some very good discussions about um, what the data sources are saying about a certain object. We've had very sort of generative, very productive discussions between um, informatics experts and domain specific, uh, domain sort of uh, domain specific knowledge producers. Uh, because of of this uh, highly articulated language that you have to go through in order to get to to some sort of uh, concept map using Psyduck. Thanks. Mm -hmm.